Hi guys, my name is Alfonso Diambo. I work with Napanda Institute, which is located in Nairobi, Kenya. It is a pleasure to meet you guys. And um, I'm just very sorry because of time, uh, time zones. Uh, we could have, have a very interactive conversation together, but I hope we'll get time to um, have a chat together. So I'm pleased today to uh, bring to you um, what Tunapandanet is. Uh, Tunapandanet is a community network which is based in Nairobi, Kenya. And um, we have been in existence for a quite a number of time and we have uh, also been working with the community. And I, enjoy, I really enjoy that. Yes. Yeah, so, my background it is, is in telecommunication engineering, and uh, I have almost five years experience in community networks. And this is something that I really love and have a lot of passion. I'm actively doing a lot of research on how to develop and also to improve more on the performance and um, adaptability of the community networks, not only in Kenya, but um, in the whole world, right? Currently, we have seen a very growing, um, high growing um, a trend in community networks. A uh, number of them have been cre uh, created. Uh, talk about Asia, talk about uh, Africa, talk about uh, uh, US. Yeah, there are a number of community networks that are coming up. And uh, that is because we, have really, uh, people have noticed that there is a gap in the communication um, uh, at, uh, sphere. Like, uh, for instance, we can talk about, yeah, before it used to be uh, the role of the big ISPs, the internet service providers to like to do last mile connectivity to communities. But this has not been uh, in a good uh, pattern because like, uh, these big ISPs, they really fear um, areas that are not profit uh, feasible. Yeah, and so this is now where community networks come in to bridge that particular gap. And it has really picked very well because uh, it goes beyond what other ISPs go, uh, uh, can do. Uh, just for it. For example, if you talk about ISPs uh, that we have in, in Kenya here, their big thing is just to get you connected, but they don't really bother what you're going to do with your connectivity. So that is now where the community networks come in and plug into that to make sure that uh, apart from connectivity, is there any other thing that can improve livelihood of, of the community or can change the dimensions of the community? And this is very important because the community network will get into uh, deeper into community activities and and and, and um, livelihood activity uh, livelihood activities. I mean, yeah, and they get to understand and work with the community as they get to to learn on what community wants, what people need, what are the areas of pain points. Yeah, and then we we come up with tailored solutions that are both. Uh, which are not partisan, and they are uh, made to address particular problem in a, in a community. Yeah, so just in brief, I'll take you through what Tunapananet is and um, yeah, how we can also collaborate and work together in building these community networks and seeing how we can, uh, yeah, I'm sure at the end of it, you'll also get to uh, grab some point of interest where you can a plug in your efforts and also to support and also like just work and do more a lot of research because this is an area which has not been truly like uh, highly exploited it is an area that has given us a lot of potential as researchers as scholars to yeah just uh, do a, a, a lot of research and and, and documentary just to know like what is the impact of community networks and how does it change the livelihood of the community? Yeah, without further ado, I'll 
like to to move forward. Thank you very much. Yeah, so in, in an answer, Tunapanda Net is a community networks, a network which is located in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, Nairobi, Kenya is in the Africa region. And uh, Tunapanda Net was born in the year 2015 uh, by the founders of, uh, of Tunapanda. Uh, that is Joel Larson and Mike Larson. And the main idea behind that was just to uh, localize the local content and make them available for local community. Uh, something that um, closely related to how the internet in a box works, just trying to interlink devices with a centralized uh, data or information so that um, people can access wirelessly. I'm sure you have heard of internet in a box. And the main aim was also just to put together learning resources from for students in a, in, in a central digital store. And this was as a result of um, different uh, youths and, and young men and women in, in, in Kibera were trying, really struggling to get these learning resources with them. So we saw it uh, as a need that um, we really need to empower the community with the resources. And one of the resources was like um, reading materials. People, are, uh, students are going to school, but books themselves are very limited. They're not easy to find. They're very expensive as you compare to the lifestyle of Kibera uh, as, as a local slum. And then things became very tough. So Tunapananet came in between to look into ways of um, bringing things that are sensible and that are also necessary to for a community to grow things like education things like health things like um uh literacy these are those are things that uh, if given power then we see a community that is more empowered and unenlightened yeah so that is how uh, in a brief that is how to it came to be and since then um Napanda has grown into some level now. Uh, someone can ask why 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 is Tunapanda Net? In fact, why is it a community network? And what's the concept of a community network? Where does it come from? Yeah, as I mentioned in the introduction, that um, community networks is uh, an upcoming idea that has been um, really being adopted since uh, early 2020. Uh, to, to, to early 2000, I mean, and it has really, we have really seen a dynamic change uh, turn around in, in the connectivity of the digital world, where community want to come up with services that suits their problem because they are the people who understand their problem. Because all along, remember, uh, we have been trying to give community or, 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 the, or, or yeah, community groups solutions that we think can help them without us considering the solutions that they think can help them solve their problems. So community networks is beginning more, uh, more popularity because of its ability to interact closely with the communities and also to be at the pain point of the community. So Tunapanda Net is um, in Kibera Slam where we have a, a a lot of um, economic and socioeconomic problems, uh, being people being poor, living standards, health, uh, sanitary problems, education problems, and any other things that um, a slum might experience. And these are also, they have also experienced a lot of, like I can call them neglect from the government. So most of the services are not rendered to the, the, the local slum communities. Yeah, and they really face a lot of challenges. Uh, just looking at the setups of Kibera, it can really tell you a lot how these things work. Yeah, so we saw a sense of bringing affordable and meaningful access to the unconnected segment of the community, just to allow them to also enjoy their equal um, digital opportunity as well as other services. 
Yeah, because already there is a gap. There is a connectivity gap between the connected and the unconnected. Uh, nowadays, I, I, we really uh, think that um, uh, online presence is not only for communication, but also for an eye opener for businesses, small growing businesses, small um, SMEs, small um, uh, <clears throat> upcoming uh, entrepreneurs. They get to uh, do a lot with with the internet, so that is where we come in and we see like it is not just giving you internet; it is a matter of giving you something which is meaningful, meaningful and affordable because we already understand your economic status. So it is a, a matter of uh, connecting and empowering you on how you can use that internet or that infrastructure to improve on your. Um, on your economic status or livelihood pattern. So if you are a small uh, entrepreneur, then how can you use internet or our infrastructure to grow your business so that you can see a change, right? In your sales or a change in your income. If you are a school, then how can you use a uh, network infrastructure to grow and build your school? to grow children, uh, students, and also to grow teachers, to empower them. So in that case, we get in with a, a lot of capacity building training activities where we take teachers, we, we take teachers through digital literacy training, ICT integration in schools. Yeah, and we, we have seen this work because um, uh, teachers have been trying to roll out the ICT skills in schools. And then uh, fortunately enough, Kenya rolled out something that uh, a curriculum that is known as CBC, a content-based curriculum. So that is more based on, it is more of um, embracing the talent at tender age and then nurturing that talent. So we find that we, we, we encourage even schools that are, that are partners or that we have connected to start engaging uh, students or, or, or pupils as, as slow as the age of uh, three years or four years in matters relating IT so that if they, as, as they grow up, then they see the benefit and the importance of tapping into technology. Because of course, in the next five years coming, then technology will be everywhere and it will be everything that we are trying to achieve. When Kenya and, and, and some other countries have really tried to uh, digitize the, a lot of contents and accessibility, we have e-citizen that can allow you to apply for different things, different government uh, services. So that just tells us how we are trying to get into technology, but the government itself has not put strategies that can uh, support the local community or remote community on how they can access the digitized services. So community networks will play a very good role here because they get in the communities, they train them on these uh, smaller things that really translate to bigger things in their lives and then making them more lively and more active uh, in the perspective of technology. Now, how has been our journey? <clears throat> Of course, yes, uh, our journey has been very um, hectic to some point because uh, uh, Tunapananet was born in the year 2015. And since then, we have not had a lot of uh, escal escalation in terms of growth. Uh, in 2015, we what happened definitely just, just defining the objectives and also identifying the communities that will be engaged. Remember, this was a new idea coming into a community which is all already hostile and they really need things that can support their life feed. And by then, network internet was not appealing to them. So it was a bit difficult and rigid, uh, kind of fictitious uh, to get the community that you would work with. Because most of them would want, like, if you get into their school, for example, if it is a community school, then you, you promise something like a donation to them, a support to them. So that is a, a dynamic that we never had. 
So we add our own story on that, like telling them how internet will help, how this thing will help. So it forced us to do a pilot phase and that pilot was support, was free of charge because by then we were also testing our infrastructure and our viability with our services. So that is in the year 2015, 2016, we defined a number of contexts, timeframes, and formats of community engagement. Um, things like how, what will we do then with the community? How will we do it? And how will community benefit from that? Then we also came up with different frameworks of training programs to just to get community involved. In the year 2016, 2017, we had a good growth. We connected three schools. Uh, in the first pilot uh, phase, and uh, that is when we did outdoor uh, network transmission or network deployment. We had a small infrastructure development and feasibility study on the same because no one was really ready to uh, give us space. We did not have uh, uh, towers and all that, name it. And then we did a lot of review, reflection, and improvement. And the year 2018, up to date, things shoot. And that is when we, were, we, we, we hitted 36 uh, centers, including schools, health centers, uh, community CBO, uh, community-based organizations, youth organizations, women organizations, uh, feminist groups, and other um, many other groups that really managed to join. And through that, we did a lot of um, uh, community trainings, what we call TOT, training, uh, trainers of trainees. So this is a program that uh, trains teachers, trains community members, and then they go out to and continue in, in, in the process of training other, other members. And it works, and we have really seen a lot of impact in that. Then we had a network performance improvement. We defined different routes. We corrected on some things. Yeah, we changed some devices and we also worked on some other configuration models and network models and uh, even redesigned the network to make sure we have good coverage and failover points. Um, in this year, again, uh, between 2018 and today, we are looking, we have been also doing a lot of research on network automation because as the network grows, it also comes with challenges of management, sustainability, growth and expansion. So this is where like we, we, we need to uh, have automation systems or automated systems that are helping us to monitor and track network performance. So network monitoring tools, billing tool, uh, tools, ticketing tools, and CRM are things that we are really and actively doing a lot of research, consulting everywhere, uh, so that we can have a more robust and uh, replicable uh, solutions towards this, because this is something that most community networks in Africa and beyond have been struggling with, because no community network actually has um, tailor-made solutions for this. We just keep on running from different uh, off-shelf uh, systems, maybe some that comes with the device, uh, with the vendors. If it is Microtech, then we talk about Dude. If it is um, Ubiquiti, the vendor, you talk about UNMS, uh, yeah, so you find that it, you, are, you keep on jumping from one platform to the other. And these platforms are not, inter, uh, they are not correlated and they are, they are not compatible to each other. So like the network becomes so jargonist and so big in terms of management than what you have on the ground. Yeah, and then we also been uh, working on curriculum development and documentation. So this is where we are um, trying to keep records, uh, come up with uh, training manuals, guide materials, wiki, so that uh, in any case, someone else want to start a community network, then they do not need to go through the process that you have gone through. 
and also maybe to encounter mistakes and problems that we have got into while we were growing and already we have made learn we have gotten some new insights and we have learned on from the mistakes that we did so we are in a position we are in a, in, in a scenario where we want to document every process every step that we make and make sure that um, we have all this information in a central place, which is open source and um, can be used by anyone. Yeah, so we just want to be a center of um, support for other community networks that are coming up. Even when talk about, talking about softwares that we, we intend to develop, these softwares, uh, we are intending to develop things that can be adopted by other community networks with ease without necessarily going through the similar phase of development, which is sometimes very costly and unrelated, yes. Yes, so talking about Nafandanet at Chekshia in terms of network design, uh, we have a very simple network because um, one of the key uh, feature of community networks is the simplicity. It should be simple so that um, uh, someone who has not even gone to a telecommunication class or ICT class or computer science class, uh, we call them uh, uh, grassroots engineers. They can still manage the network. So we try to make the network as simple and as simple and secure so that um, um, it takes someone very less time to understand and also to support in network management. Yeah, so at our first layer, we have um, our ISP, which is uh, Kenya Education Network Trust in uh, Kenet. And uh, from Kenet, we drop into our data center. We have a call layer uh, running on Microtix, uh, cloud root and cloud switch. Then we, got in, we get into distribution layer where we do wireless distribution to different nodes as far as to uh, 15 kilometers away. And then we get into access layer. This is now at the consumer level. And then at the access layer, now we have the services that we are offering. The services can be e-learning materials. Uh, the services can be internet itself. And then we also have some uh, support services like um, capacity building, training, and all that. And then at the end of it, we have clients, which are very important in this case. So the diagram on the right is um, a typical network design that we have. And it really explains a lot uh, from the top to bottom. And our network is uh, a point to point and multi multi point uh, wireless distribution network design which is integrated with a mesh at uh, meshing topology at some point, just to allow for redundancy and failover checks. Uh, now, yeah, it is very important for us to also understand what are the core values that we, we look, what are our core areas? So our core areas is community, and quote community because that is where we stand. Ourselves are a community, so we, uh, look, we are looking at a community in a community networks where we talk about how do they, how can we mobilize them, how can we engage them and give them connectivity. Then look at organizational capacity, systems and processes. What are we, if it is an, a health organization, what are, what are their capacity in terms of digital literacy? What systems are they using and what process are they uh, having and how can we get into that? For example, we talk about collecting data for health condition in, in, in Kibera and then giving data to them. And then they come up with a um, health mitigation process. So those are the things that we are trying to mitigate. Network infrastructure and services, deployment, management and scaling, that is all around building infrastructure. Social enterprise, this cuts across to um, upcoming or, or, or small local entrepreneurs who are into business, they want to grow, 
So one thing is just to connect them. Second thing is to empower them, training and coaching and doing all that uh, online marketing so that they can build on their, uh, on their sales. Then there is policy and regulation participation. This is now where uh, we also try to participate in, in, in policy and um, regulation uh, activities at the advanced level, uh, where we also bring in the aspect of community networks to the face of the government. They understand, uh, right? They know that this thing is impacting life and they need to give some support in terms of regulations, in terms of spectrum management and all that. Then talk about sustainability, economic and environmental, environmental and social uh, status. Yeah, of course, we need a, a network that is more sustainable, a network which is more economic friendly, environmental friendly, and has social impact. So all that is uh, some of the things that you're looking into. And then finally, we have content creation. Uh, most of you have realized that uh, there is a, a number of a number of talents within Kibera itself and with the local community. And these talents, they fade away because they, they do not get a platform of, to showcase like what happens in the ground. But now when we uh, empower these guys with the connectivity and tell them, okay, right, you can create such a thing, this amazing talent, you can create this and then you can post, uh, post this on social media. And this is how you can, you can benefit from it. So that is all about that, uh, what we look into. And uh, now I'd like to touch on some areas of growth that we really need, we call them gaps. Uh, still, we have a gap in IP management and vast routing because, of course, the way the more the network grows, the more advanced it becomes in terms of IP management, in terms of routing and switching. Uh, physically, that is very important. Then infrastructure and power backup plans, some nodes, well, power has been one of the problems, uh, more so when we have blackout. You're yeah, right in some, maybe in a certain node, then it means that whoever con is connected to that node is down. And that is a, a, a problem in reliability. Then there are some uh, demographic activities, slum demolition and upgrade is taking place in Korea. And it has really displaced a lot of people. Uh, yeah, that is also a, a threat to us. And operationally, we I mentioned that we really we are looking into having a more a stable and um, easy to manage network. So that would mean that we require network mon monitoring tools to check on outages and also network performance. We will also need uh, we, we we also need uh, billing and CRM tools for invoicing, ticketing, asset asset management uh, and other management, uh, other, other operational management, then we also need critically, we need um, access to local content versus data. In this case, I mean like, think about thinking about captive portals. When someone gets into the network, how will we filter out uh, zero rated services and versus um, the non-zero rated services like, working with the world guardians, setting our sport systems. Yeah, and so as students and also as researchers, this is an area that we, I really encourage us to take into more consideration, and just to think about how we can automate a community network. And it is not only community network, we realize that even the bigger SPs are struggling. We are, they, they are moving from one uh, platform to another just to uh, have the operations in order. But uh, we wanted to have a one-shop platform where, uh, like, I mean, one-stop shop uh, for a network, community network management. So if you can get into uh, looking into, uh, like you help us or, or, or 
help us get to understand how we can automate our network. Building systems uh, that can help us to monitor the network, systems that can help us to track payments and everything, and also to manage communication between us and the clients, respond to tickets and also create tickets. And finally, working up, uh, around captive portals, we really appreciate and we are looking forward to working with you guys and uh, collaborating even far uh, more than this, uh, learning from each other. And this is area that I assure you, you really get to, to love this area of community networks. It's something that is coming up and getting impact and it will change the dynamics of connectivity, more so in the last mile uh, segment. Uh, I would love to stop there. Thank you very much, everyone. In case there is any question, um, I would love to get your questions, suggestions, and reflections uh, through my best friend, uh, Dr. Innocent Junior, Obi, and uh, thank you very much.